Hey everyone, welcome to Integrity Church. We're so happy you're here. Let's get started. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Connie. I'm David. Today we're going to be picking up in our series, Advantageous. So if we could, just prepare our hearts for a time of worship and praise. Prophet seen of old when 
Good morning, church. It's offering time, and the theme of our message today is love, and we can express our love through giving this morning. I just want to encourage you to extend your worship and, and giving to God today, and we thank you so much for supporting the work of the church, that we can go on and continue to proclaim the gospel uh, to those around us. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. We're so glad that you were able to join with us this morning. Uh, we are back on our live stream going virtual once again, hopefully for a much shorter time than last. But in, a, um, in an abundance of caution, we sense this is the de direction that the Lord uh, would have us to go uh, for this period of time. Uh, we're certainly in the midst of a very unprecedented time uh, in history. And speaking to a lot of pastors, it's really frustrating because you know that whatever decision you make, you're always going to upset somebody. And, uh, and so you make those decisions, um, hopefully with the best interest of everybody um, as the primary and ultimately looking to honor God uh, in the decisions that are made. And that's why, uh, as a pastoral team, we, we, we knew that this is the direction we needed to go right now. Um, it's certainly an unprecedented time in our history. We've never been here before. And so um, it causes us to rely heavily on the Lord, heavily on um, his spirit leading us and guiding us. And uh, just a couple of things to consider as we kind of continue going forward. Uh, number one, I want to encourage you to remain flexible. Um, you know, much of this stuff that's going on, it's a moving target. And, and decisions need to be made sometimes proactively that we could look back and say, well, that was a little extreme. Maybe we didn't need to do that. Um, but sometimes we look back and say, I'm glad we did that. And it spared some consequences. And so 
really important for us to remain flexible. Um, I, I don't know if it's one of the Beatitudes, but if it, it should be, blessed are the, the flexible because they sleep better at night, right? And so um, we appreciate your flexibility and we encourage you to, to remain flexible. Um, number two, I want to encourage you to remain faithful during this time, right? Don't allow the obstacles that you may be facing hinder you from pursuing God, but instead use the obstacles as tools to draw closer to the Lord. Let the, let the fear you may be feeling or the concerns that you may be having or the questions you may be having, let that drive you to your knees in prayer and uh, time in the word and really seeking God. Remain faithful in this time. And then thirdly, remain focused. Um, let's not forget the big picture. God is at work, not just around us, but listen, God is at work in us as well. He that began a good work in you, he will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. And so we sometimes get so caught up in responding to what's going on around us that we fail to see what God is doing in us. And so let's remain flexible, let's remain faithful, and let's remain focused during this season. Don't be discouraged, right? Don't check out, but let's, let's continue to press in together and allow God to use this season to accomplish his will in our lives, his sanctification, uh, in our sanctification in our lives. And let's come out of this loving Jesus and loving one another more and more. Um, hey, we're continuing on in our Advent series. We are on week three, and uh, we've looked so far at the theme of hope, and we talked about that Jesus uh, is, is our hope, right? That hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Jesus never lets us down. Last week, Pastor Dominic did a wonderful job speaking about peace and declared that peace has a name, and his name is Jesus, this morning, as we continue our journey, we come to our, our third um, word in our theme, that being love. And like the others, love has a name, and his name is Jesus. So what's the point here? What are we looking to do? Are we, are we changing the name of God each week to kind of fill in our themes? Of course not. When we talk about hope, and when we talk about peace, and we talk about love, as we're about to do, we are pointing out that Jesus is the epitome of these things. He is the epitome of those characteristics. He is, the, he is the ultimate example of these things. He is the face of hope. He is the face of peace. He is the face of love and he is the face of joy. If we want to know what hope and peace and love and joy is, we must simply look at the life and the teachings of Jesus. Well, Love applies here as well in the same way. Love has a name and his name is Jesus. You know, love is a very misunderstood word in our culture today. It's applied to things and to people and to experiences so casually and in so many ways that it really dilutes the very essence of, of what love is. More poems have been written, more songs have been sung, more hearts been, have been broken over this one word, love. But in many ways, the essence of what love is has been lost by many. Love, which, which by design is intended to be the focus of what we extend, that was the intention of what love is. That's what God modeled for us to understand what love is. But it has now become more not the focus of what we extend, but the focus of what we receive. In other words, if I benefit from something or someone that I like, well, then I like that thing. If I benefit from someone or something a whole lot, well, then I love that thing. And so my gauge of emotion oftentimes is, is determined by how much I benefit from it. And if I benefit from something greatly, I would say I love it. Well, that's not the picture of love that the scripture gives to us. Love is not so much about receiving as it is about giving. 
And God models for that, models that so beautifully for us. It was love, John records, that motivated the Father to send the Son to the world, that whosoever would believe upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. And then Christ came, the very embodiment of love. Love has a name and his name is Jesus. Love motivated the Father to send the Son and love motivated the Son to live and indeed to die for you and for me so that we could be with the Lord forever. We learn very quickly from the ministry of Jesus and the sending of the Son from the Father that love is not selfish. It is not self-serving. Love, true love, is, what, is more about what you give, not about what you receive. The Apostle Paul paints a beautiful picture for us as to what love is in his famous passage that so many know in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, known as the, the love chapter. Paul defines for us, under the inspiration of the Spirit, what love is. He says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but, but it rejoices with truth. Paul says, love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. And then he reminds us that love never ends. Paul gives us a, a wonderful description of, of how love is, is lived out. And as we consider the life of Jesus and the, the mission of Jesus and the love of Jesus, we see that Jesus perfectly demonstrates what love is. We have seen the patience of Jesus. We have seen the, 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 uh, the care and the nurturing of Jesus as we read through the gospels. Christmas is about the love of God made manifest in the person of Jesus Christ. It's God's love for us being so great that he, he willingly became like us, taking on the form of man so that we might be where he is. It was out of love that, that God created the heavens and the earth. It was out of love that God created man in his own image. It was out of love that God placed man in the garden. It was even out of love that God restricted them from eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because if we, as we consider all that they had experienced in that garden, everything that God created was good. Their relationship with God was good. They only had the knowledge of good. God's restriction upon them to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not for, to protect them from knowing what is good. They had already experienced that. But God, his love for them, that caution was to protect them from knowing what was evil. It was out of love that after they had sinned, God banished them from the garden, lest they eat of the tree of life and remain in that fallen state forever. It was out of love that God banished them in that sinful state, for had they eaten of the tree of life in that sinful state, they would have remained in that state forever. It was out of love that God covered their nakedness in the garden, a, a foreshadow of one who would come, the solution to man's biggest problem, the person of Jesus Christ. It was out of that promise came the one who would crush the head of the serpent. It was out of love that God carried and preserved his people all throughout the Old Testament. It was out of love that the prophets would point to this coming Messiah. It was out of love that the law was given. It was out of love that the systems were in place and the types were in place. And then it finally happened. Out of love, God sent his only son, born of a young teenage girl named Mary. A virgin knew not a man, 
But as the scripture prophesied, a virgin would conceive. And God showed up. John records he came to his own. But his own people did not receive him. God had arrived. The promised Messiah had come. And what motivated his entrance into time was love. He would teach us the ways of God. He would heal our sick. He would set free those who were in bondage. He would, he would bring forgiveness to the sinner. He would bring acceptance to the outcast. He brought sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf. All of this motivated by love. It's what God gave. And yet, his greatest act of love was not even necessarily evidenced in his coming to us, although that was a huge act of love. But his greatest evidence of love for us was not in his coming for us, but in his dying for us. Jesus' own words in John 15, Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. We can best celebrate and appreciate the Christmas story viewing it through the lens of the cross. We celebrate the birth of the Savior, but we recognize that the cross brings purpose to Christ's coming. And it is the greatest display of love known to man. So what do we do with this love? How do we respond to this kind of love? Certainly our awareness of God's love ought to create in us a greater love for God. Certainly our awareness and consideration of all that God has done for us ought to create in us a greater love and appreciation for who God is. John writes in his first epistle, chapter four, four verse 19, he says, we love because he first loved us. And so obviously we are to love God, but the, but the way in which we are to extend our love for God is best seen and best made manifest in the way in which we love other people. John's first epistle makes that abundantly clear for us. All of those who claim to love God are called to show their love for God, not by the way they say they love God, but by the way in which they extend love to other people. You've heard me say it many times. How in the world could we, could we possibly show our love for God apart from showing our love to people? John writes in verse 7 of his first epistle, chapter 4, he said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. I love that. What John is saying here is that if you say you know God, then you ought to love. He says, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born from God and knows God. And then he presents the contrast. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Because God is love. That person who suggests they love God but hate other people are lying. It's not possible to hate what God loves. John says in verse 9, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through, the, through him, I love that. Look what he says here. He says, in this, this is the way the love of God is made manifest into the world. If there's a way that we can understand the love of God, there's no greater way for us to see the love of God in action than by God sending his son into the world. In this, the love of God was made manifest. It was revealed to the world that God sent his only son into the world. Why would he do that? He says, so that we might live through him. What motivated the father in sending the son was so that you and I might live through him. What motivated Christmas? was the love of God for you and for me so that we might live through him. In this, verse 10 says, in this is love. Not that we have loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the payment for our sins. He says, beloved, and here's the challenge. If God so loved us, so also we are to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Do you see the logic that John presents here? He's saying, listen, nobody's ever seen God. And so if you say you love God, well then extend that love to God by, the way, by giving that love to people you do see. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, he says, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us or matured in us. And so as we consider Christmas and we consider the love that God has extended towards us so graciously this Christmas season, let's, let's seek ways in which we can follow that example by extending the love that we have been the recipients of and extend that love towards other people. How? Well, love is patient and kind. One of the ways that we can extend the love of God to others is to be, to be patient with them. What an important thing to consider in this, this time when things are just so heavy all around us. People responding in different ways and we need to extend patience to one another. Love is patient and kind towards one another. Not just towards those you agree with, not just towards those who vote like you vote, not just those towards who value things like you value. No, we are to demonstrate patience and kindness to all of God's creation. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Before we engage our mouths, we need to engage our hearts to consider the way in which God treats us and our reactions and our responses to other people need to be informed by the way in which we have, have been recipients of God's love. You say, well, but I don't, they don't treat me the way I should be treated. Well, we don't treat God the way he should be treated either. Yeah, but they don't deserve it. Yeah, neither did I. And yet God extended his love towards me. Love does not insist upon its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. You see, love has a name and his name is Jesus. And Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy or boast, and if there's anybody who could have done that while walking the earth, Jesus quite certainly had every right to do that. Jesus is not irritable, he is not resentful. He does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but he not only rejoices in the truth, but he is the truth. Jesus bears all things. Jesus believes all things. When we talk about Jesus believing all things, what does that mean? It's not that he believes everything out there. He means he believes the best in you. Jesus is the hope of all things. Jesus endures all things and, and Jesus never fails. And so as we consider Christmas and we celebrate this advent of hope and peace and love, we recognize that love has a name and his name is, it is Jesus and you and I have been recipients of this great gift of love evidenced in the coming of the Savior made manifest in the Savior giving his life for the world. And likewise, you and I are called to extend the love of Christ to the world around us. May we this Christmas season be an extension of the love of God to the world around us. God bless you.
Thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy that you are part of our family here at Integrity Church. Um, I know that I got a lot out of the message today from Pastor Tony, so thank you so much for that. Yeah, for sure. We're super, super excited to see you this week, and we're even more excited to see you next week. See you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>